in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Under ordinary circumstances, Rodney Harrington and young Rachel Wells might be attracted to one another, and at this time in their lives deeply involved. But Rodney used to bring Allison McKenzie home to the same house, and his time with Rachel in his mind is stolen time, stolen from the missing Allison. And tonight, still another problem came between them. Dr. Michael Rossi returned to Peyton Place, and Rachel could not hide her interest in him. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? The perfect gift. A mitten eater. Oh, he's a darling, beautiful thing. Is he really mine? Did Dr. Rossi bring him for me? He certainly did. Well, is it all right? Can I keep him? Of course. Of course you can. No. <laughs> you better give him some milk or there won't be a slipper or a mitten left in the house. Oh. It's a wonderful present. I thought Dr. Rossi acted kind of strangely, though. But I guess I'm wrong. I guess you are. Well, don't stay up too late. You know, you have two babies to take care of now. I will. Good night. Good night. Oh. He did think about me. He knew you'd be perfect. Talk to you a minute. I don't think we have anything to say to each other. Hey, you got the wrong idea. Listen, the other night you were right. I've had time to think it over. You were right. I, I shouldn't have called my niece. <laughs> I don't mean to, but somehow or other, I, I set her teeth on edge. Is that all? I want you to know that I'm not going to bother no more phone calls or nothing. That's. I think that's great. There's, uh, there's something else. Oh, yeah? What? I... I just think I ought to tell you about my niece. She's not your niece. You were out with her tonight. I saw you driving through the square a little while ago. So? Take it easy. I'm not going to cross-examine you or anything. I, I don't blame you for taking a fancy to her. She, she's quite a looker. <laughs> Hardly seems possible that, that skinny little bag of bones round and out like that. <laughs> Chandler, you can stow all the phony nostalgia. I'm not buying it. Now, if you've got something to say, say it. Okay, okay. What I'm uh, trying to say is that uh, Rachel isn't like most of the girls these days. She, uh, uh, she was raised different. You might even call it old-fashioned. Her Aunt Lucy was, was strict with her, mighty strict. She didn't hold with her having dates and boyfriends and carrying on. She may uh, look like she can handle it. You know what I mean? But you... You've got to keep her upbringing in mind. In other words, take it easy, understand? Oh, you understand something. You stay away from Rachel. She's not your responsibility anymore. Who she goes out with or what she does is none of your business. So long, Chandler. Oh, and Chandler, do me a favor. Don't advise me on how to treat Rachel. 
I don't need it. Understand? Your breakfast is on the table. Come on. Well, what table is my breakfast on? Well, I have to say that, because if I don't, you'll wait till the last minute and everything gets cold. Your orange juice and your vitamin are out there. Can I have a kiss? You don't have to do all the work. Fried eggs are scrambled. I'll take the blue plate special if I can have five more minutes of sleep. Norman, come on, please sit up. Here's your bathroom. Put one arm in. That's good. Right there. That's good. Now this one. Yeah. You know, nobody likes to get up in the morning. But I guess I'm luckier than you are. Yeah. You don't have anybody to wake you up. No, I only have to go downstairs to work, and then I have a whole drugstore full of food. But you have to trudge all the way to school without any breakfast. Just. Just a few Z's, please. The only times I have to trudge is when I don't get enough sleep. And then wait through hours of classes on an empty stomach. No wonder you get discouraged. It's from hunger. And it's all my fault. From now on, it's my wifely duty to see that you eat a good breakfast every morning. Hey, you remember when I told you I wanted you to keep nagging me? Yeah. I lied. Sit down. I'll go get your toast. You don't understand. The couple of times you have fixed my breakfast for me, I was punchy all day. And once in Mr. Hilliard's class, I fell asleep, which is one class I can't afford to fall asleep in, because that's one of the classes I'm failing. And Mr. Hilliard puts me to sleep without any help from you. So... If you have my best interest in mind. Rita, what's the matter? It's okay. What's okay? I just felt a little dizzy, that's all. Here, come on. No, I'm fine. Come on. What happened? I don't know. I guess I just got a little... I heard and I got, I got clumsy. You can't do that. I'm the clumsy one in this family. I'm fine now, honest. Okay, how long have you been fine? Come on. It's happened a couple of times before, but it always goes away. Is there anything else I should know? Nothing I'd be afraid to tell you. Okay. Where are you going? Call Mr. Courtney and tell him you're not coming to work today. Norm. Down. Then I'm going to call Dr. Rossi and make an appointment for you. No, that's silly. That's the way it's going to be. What a flop. I start out by trying to take care of you, and you end up taking care of me. That's also the way it's going to be. trying out the living room. It's fun, isn't it? Mm. It's your average splendid living room. Is that going to be your chair? I'll make my decision later. Have you been spying on me? From the second we moved in. How's the weather up there? Warm, hot air rises. <laughs> the 
Give me a hand. You know what I've been thinking? We were married in this room. Do you take this man? Do you take this woman? Stephen, do you really think we'll be able to make this place ours? Oh, yes, I do. I sat in that chair, and I was comfortable. No ghosts. I sat in it, and I made it mine. Come here. Sit down. I think what I'll do is wrap you up. <laughs> Any special reason? No, I just... Uh, want to see how you look wrapped up? How do I look? Oh, you look good in anything. Anything at all. We'll take a little bit at a time. Sit in the chairs, walk through the rooms, take our meals, sleep, shout at each other, help each other. Betty will live here, and just by living here, we'll make it our own. A little bit at a time. It's the only way. And we can spend hours, days, months in our suite thinking about the fact that Catherine Payton and Leslie Harrington lived in that same suite as man and wife. And their little boys, Rodney and Norman, rushed in every Sunday morning to spend a half hour romping with them. You still think of her that way, don't you, as Rodney and Norman's mother? Mm-hmm. Yeah, knowing that she was my mother, too, leaves me with all kinds of feelings. But there are no ghosts, Betty. I have poked into every corner of this house. And there's no need for me to look for them, huh? I'm gonna be late. But you, you haven't finished your breakfast? Well, that's my breakfast, isn't it? Yes. Hello, Les. Would you please check with my secretary before you come barging in here? Well, there's nobody out there, Les. Chandler, Jack Chandler. I, I've called, I've dropped by, I've left messages. You took off a little weight, lad. What can I do for you? <laughs> nice. Roomy. Gives a man space to breathe. I like the back room at eight, is unless cramped, smoky. Those radiator pipes banging so the man couldn't hear himself think. Forrest. Jack Forrest. <laughs> it's been a long time, Les. Who'd you think I was? I don't know. Somebody I used to know on the road. What can I do for you? I want to say hello to my old friend Les Harrington. Don't, uh, don't you want to say hello to your old friend Jack Forrest? <laughs> Chandler, Jack Chandler. We were never friends. Business acquaintances, then? Not even that. Not only because somebody beat us to our business. They said, uh, or at least you said it was your wife. What do you think you have? And what do you think you're going to do with it? I may have a little hay behind my ears, but it ain't seeped into my brain. There's nothing I can do with what I know, even less I want to do with it. Why did you show up here? Uh, almost 20 years ago, you were... Uh, you almost found a job for me. I thought maybe you could find one now. I'm sorry. Not the same thing. Work here. Doing what? Anything you want me to do. We're laying men off. Not all of them go back as far as we do, Les. That sounds like pressure, Forrest. The kind that starts with a quick loan and works its way up to a steady salary. Blackmail's not my game, Les. Good, because I'm not playing it either. You can shout your story from the middle of the square. A lot of people may believe it, but nobody can prove it. When Eddie Jack sprung us together, he said he knew a guy who wanted a job done. I didn't ask him what, only how much he'd pay me to do it. I'm still only asking that. Well, maybe I can find something for you. Thanks. But maybe I can't. Just try this. If I do put you on, get used to calling me Mr. Harrington. Anything you say, Mr. Harrington. Forrest. Chandler. The first name's still Jack, though. Elizabeth Carson was killed by my wife. My wife is dead. So is Elizabeth Carson. Don't try bringing either of them back again. I get your message, Mr. Harrington. Make sure that you do. I'll let you know about the job.